Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Joseph W. Westfall. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. First, let me uh, recognize, uh, um, obviously, our host today, the Deputy Secretary of Defense, Honorable Bill Lynn. Thanks uh, for hosting this event. And also our Chief of Staff of the Army and his uh, lovely bride, General Dempsey. And our Sergeant Major of the Army, uh, Raymond Chandler. Our Under Secretary of Defense for uh, Personnel and Readiness, the Honorable Cliff Stanley is here today. Thank you for being here, Mr. Secretary. Yesterday, uh, we all watched, along with the rest of the nation, the White House ceremony where President Obama presented the families of Private First Class Anthony Kahuhohono and Private First Class Henry Svela with our country's highest award for valor, the Medal of Honor. Today, we assemble in this Hall of Heroes to memorialize those two brave soldiers by placing their names on the walls that surround us, besides the names of our nation's other Medal of Honor recipients. To the families of these soldiers, we owe you thanks for working so hard and for so long to make sure the nation recognized their extraordinary courage. This commemoration would not have been possible without your under untiring dedication and the efforts of members of Congress and other senior leaders. Thank you, George. Where are you, George? There you are. Thank you, George. And Sylvia and Dorothy, who's not here today, uh, who was yesterday at the ceremony and received uh, the medal on behalf of her brother. His other sister's here today. Dorothy's not feeling very well. But we thank you both for representing your uncle and your brother at this ceremony and your families for all of you being here today. This ceremony is all the more meaningful because Anthony's and Henry's actions are a timeless inspiration to soldiers who are once again fighting America's enemies in faraway places under very challenging conditions. The nation's highest military decoration, the Medal of Honor, is unique for the conditions for which it is awarded and for the lasting remembrance and bestows on its recipients. In every case, it is a sign of terrible loss, of sacrifice, and selfless service. It always comes out of crises, when an attack is faltering, a defense is crumbling, or when a unit is on the verge of being overwhelmed by the enemy. At a critical moment, in the midst of battle, and with casualties mounting against what are often impossible odds, an individual steps forward to fill the breach. In sheer disregard for their own safety, they stand and fight, alone if need be, to repel assaults, protect their comrades, frequently at the cost of their own lives. Since the award's inception, only a few thousand of the tens of millions who have war worn our nation's uniform have earned the Medal of Honor. Before us today are men whose names are posted on the walls around us and recorded an enduring legacy of valor. Their actions testify to the price soldiers have paid to secure our nation's freedom. And I know I saw one of those uh, great men. I don't know where he's sitting today. Uh, Lieutenant General, there he is. Lieutenant General Foley, uh, a, great, a great hero of this nation. So thank you to those Medal of Honor recipients who have uh, taken the time over the years to participate in these celebrations and these memorials. As it has been with others of this elite few, Anthony and Henry answered the call to take up arms in a far off land against this nation's enemies. Both raised their hands, swore an oath, and joined the infantry in the middle of one of the most costly, strategically difficult wars our nation's, in our nation's history, the Korean War. The Korean War is often called the Forgotten War, since it is often overshadowed by World War II and Vietnam. 
The battles raged from 1950 to 1953 and are considered the first of our Cold War. Last year, the nation commemorated the 60th anniversary of the beginning of this conflict. The US service members who fought in the Korean War witnessed some of the most brutal, severe, and unforgiving conditions that American soldiers had ever been in since World War II. They are described in history books as bloody, hard, extreme, and unbearable. In the winter, the weather was intensely cold, frostbite was prevalent, while in the summer, the air was hot, humid, and flooded with downpours of rain. In the end, over 169,000 US service members were either killed, missing, captured, or wounded. For Anthony and Henry, there was the added factor of Korea's hills, the daily marathon up and down steep terrain while carrying heavy loads of weapons and ammunition to stop infiltrations and probe enemy weakness. When their units, already worn down from battle, forced their moments of crises, it was Anthony and Henry who rallied, who protected their fellow soldiers and turned the tide of battle against the enemy. Medal of Honor recipients are heroes, but the legacy has not always felt so simple to those who survived their battles. There's no making up the losses of the comrades killed and injured and the lives not lived, and the sacrifices go far beyond the words that I can ever say. In those moments when heroes make their choices, when they serve and give their all at no matter what cost, they assume a burden that few will ever comprehend, a burden their families share. Charles Dickens wrote in his book, A Tale of Two Cities, think now and then that there is a man who would give his life to keep a life you love besides you. Many of those who came back from that terrible conflict can be reunited to, to be reunited with their family did so because of the ultimate sacrifice made by Anthony and Henry. May Anthony and Henry rest in peace. May God bless them and their families. And may, may God bless the United States. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, General Martin E. Dempsey. Thanks very much. This is a proud day to be Chief of Staff of this Army when we have the privilege of meeting the families of our two Korean War heroes that we're here to honor today. And we did have a wonderful lunch together. And what I'll tell the rest of you who didn't have that privilege is that this group of people uh, are an extended army family. They're, they're just like the, the families of the young men and women who placed themselves in harm's way wearing the uniform of the United States Army today. They serve their communities, they serve their country in a variety of different ways, and we're very proud that you've all taken the time to come here and to not only honor your, your close or distant relative, but also to give us a chance to get to know you because you're why we do what we do. So thanks for being here with us today. And we'll try to, uh, I'm going to give a shot at pronouncing these names correctly. I want you to know that right from the start. I have no expectation of succeeding, but I'm going to give it a shot. Deputy Secretary, uh, other distinguished guests, thank you for being here. Sergeant Major of the Army, um, a special welcome to the Kahua Anu Anu family. That's my best shot right there. <laughs> as well as to the Savela family. Now, that was an, actually an easy one for me because I'm, I'm a fellow New Jersey kid. Uh, but as, uh, just to introduce some of the rest of you, Anthony's brother Eugene and his wife Elizabeth, his sister Elaine, and sisters-in-law Natalie and Madeline, Madeline's son George and his wife Barbara. And joining us uh, from the Savela side are Henry's sister uh, Sylvia, his granddaughter Cynthia, and his nephew Anthony, who I think is going to actually have the speaking role here in a moment. We look forward to that, Anthony. Welcome to all of you and, again, to the extended family that has joined you. I'd like to specifically recognize George Kahua Anu Anu and Henry Savela, without whom we would not be here today, and in some sense that's exactly correct. It was because of their tireless work that their uncles received the recognition that they so richly deserved. And I was talking with General Foley a moment ago, and we were celebrating the fact that, that our Army and our nation continue to try to get this right. We never forget the sacrifices, the heroism, 
of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, and Coast Guardsmen in harm's way. And even if it takes 40 years, we'll try to make sure that someone who deserves recognition will receive that recognition. So thank you all. And finally, I would like to recognize Lieutenant General Retired Bob Foley, who's kind of the Professor Emeritus of our Medal of Honor Society and someone we all respect and admire a great deal. And thank you for what you do for the society and, and continue to do for our Army. Today we induct two great warriors into our most sacred circle, the Hall of Heroes, reserved exclusively for recipients of the Congressional Medal of Honor. In the 235 year history of our Army, through our Civil War, two world wars, Korea, Vietnam, and countless smaller conflicts of the past, to today's wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, we've awarded just over 2,400 uh, medals of honor to deserving soldiers who have earned that distinction. And they are, and their legacy is enshrined here. Today, Anthony Kahua Anu Anu and Henry Svela, their names will join the names of those whose selfless acts of courage and sacrifice have built our army and our nation. Names like Joshua Chamberlain, Alvin York, Audie Murphy, and 133 veterans of the Korean War, 79 of whom were Army recipients. But more broadly, today we also celebrate and honor the legacy of all of the Korean War veterans who 61 years ago fought, fought the first hot conflict of a Cold War, outnumbered, fighting a determined enemy on, as the Undersecretary mentioned, absolutely unforgiving terrain, often in unimaginable weather. They pushed attacking communist forces back across the 38th parallel and preserve the integrity of our South Korean allies. It's been called the Forgotten War, as you mentioned, because too often their story has gone untold. But make, make no mistake, the courage, resilience, and tenacity of Anthony and Henry and those they fought alongside with and, and protected each other every day in one of our most difficult wars contributed immeasurably to our unmatched legacy as an army, as a force that stands against tyranny protects the weak, and champions freedom. Anthony Kahua Anu Anu was just 19 when he enlisted in our Army out of Hawaii and was assigned to the 7th Infantry Division. Two years later, on the 1st of September 1951, he found himself in charge of a machine gun squad defending F Company 17th Infantry uh, when they were attacked in force by elements of the Chinese 81st Division. Though only 21 years old and wounded in the initial assault, PFC Kahua Anu Anu ordered his men to cover the withdrawal of other friendly forces to more defensible positions. As the enemy continued to press their assault, he gathered what ammunition and grenades he could gather and ordered his men to fall back. Critically injured and running out of ammunition, Anthony continued fighting as his unit moved to safety, willingly sacrificing himself to save his comrades. He fought courageously as the enemy sought to overrun his position. When he ran out of ammunition, he used his grenades. And when he ran out of grenades, he killed two in hand-to-hand -hand combat with an entrenching tool before he was finally overrun. His heroic stand not only saved the lives of his comrades, but inspired them to counterattack and repel the enemy. PFC Henry Svela, a young man from New Jersey, demonstrated similar courage and sacrifice a few short months later. A rifleman with F Company 32nd Infantry Regiment, also in 7th Infantry Division, Henry and his platoon came under heavy fire from automatic weapons while conducting a reconnaissance patrol to determine enemy strengths and locations. As his platoon began to falter under the withering enemy fire, Henry leapt to his feet and led a counterattack. Bringing fire unto himself, he charged the enemy's position, firing his weapon and throwing hand grenades as he assaulted up the hill. With skill and tenacity that belied his rank and inexperience, Henry destroyed multiple enemy positions, inflicted heavy enemy casualties, and inspired others to follow him. Despite being wounded by an exploding mortar, he refused medical treatment and continued to lead the attack. And finally, when an enemy grenade landed among his comrades, without the slightest hesitation, he threw himself on that hand grenade in a final act of selfless service. This 20-year-old from Newark gave up his life so that others may live. They were two very different men, kids really, both of them, from completely different backgrounds, but they each faced a skilled and determined and numerically superior enemy. They inspired others to victory by their personal courage, and they willingly gave up their lives for their fellow soldiers. Scripture tells us that greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life 
for his friends. Anthony and Henry clearly loved their fellow soldiers. From these heroic acts, for these heroic acts, President Obama yesterday awarded Anthony and Henry the Medal of Honor, an honor six decades overdue. It's wrong to say, by the way, that they won the Medal of Honor. There are no winners, only recipients of this prestigious award, and all too often those left behind with saddened hearts but with solemn pride and cherished memories. We should be proud of them and we should cherish their memories because as an army and indeed as a nation, we owe these men and their families a long overdue debt of gratitude for their service and their sacrifice. Sacrifices they made, like so many other soldiers, still make, and, and so, like so many other soldiers, still make today in Iraq and Afghanistan so that others may enjoy the freedoms that sadly some take for granted. President Kennedy once remarked that a nation reveals itself not only in the men that it produces, but also by the men that it honors, the men that it remembers. And so today we remember Anthony Kahua, Anu Anu, and Henry Svela. We promise that they will always be remembered and we will make certain of that by their enshrinement here in the Hall of Heroes. Their legacies of courage, valor, and sacrifice will not only be preserved in our army and in our nation's history, but will inspire generations of Americans to the service of their country as well. May they rest in peace. May God bless them and you, their family members, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable William J. Lynn III. Thanks, thanks very much, uh, John Lempsey, Secretary Westfall, Secretary Stanley, uh, General Foley, let me welcome you all here to the Hall of Heroes, especially the Kaho Ohana Ohano family and the Savela families. Traveled so far and given so much for this day. Today we honor first, Privates First Class, Anthony Kaho, Kaho Ohana Ohano and Henry Savela in a tra tradition that dates back to the Civil War. It was 150 years ago this summer, or this past month, that the first shots were fired on Fort Sumter. The bloody conflict that followed touched every corner of our young nation. Over half a million men died on both sides. More than have perished in all of the wars, all of, all of our other wars combined. In the midst of this struggle that was literally tearing apart the nation, President Lincoln signed into law a medal to recognize extraordinary bravery. It was to be bestowed upon such petty officers, seamen, landsmen, and Marines as shall most distinguish themselves by their gallantry and other seamen-like qualities during the present war. That medal is the Medal of Honor. Its first recipient, Private Jacob Wilson Parrott, took part in a daring mission behind enemy lines. Though his unit's mission to destroy a Confederate supply line was thwarted, Parrott and several others were recognized for their courageous actions with the Medal of Honor. Parrott's citation, a single sentence in length, began our tradition of recognizing uncommon bravery on the battlefield. In the years since the Civil War, we have sent tens of millions of Americans into battle to defend their country. But fewer than 3,500 of them have been awarded the Medal of Honor. Its award is so rare because the feat of bravery it recognizes is so exceptional. The names of some medal recipients grace history President Theodore Roosevelt, General Douglas MacArthur, but most are ordinary Americans who took extraordinary action on the battlefield. The Hall of Heroes where we gather pays tribute to them. Today we add two more men to this select roster. Like many who came before them, Private Kahano Ahano Anu and Private Savela fought on foreign soil in defense of freedom. Far from the families who loved them, 
They made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. Although it has been 60 years since the Korean conflict, the example of their valor still endures. Private Kahano Hano will be re forever remembered for the lone assault that saved his comrades and then inspired their counterattack. His last words reportedly, I've got your back, are a creed our soldiers carry with them today whenever they go in harm's way. Private Savela similarly put the security of his fellow troops above his own life. His courageous, his courageous counterattack, after being fired upon during a recon mission, saved his unit from defeat. In throwing himself on a grenade, he gave the last full measure of his devotion to his men and to the country he swore to defend. Throughout our history, men and women like Anthony and Henry have courageously answered the call of duty. Heroes like them have stepped up when our nation needed them most. The uncommon valor they displayed is what the Medal of Honor stands for, what our country was built on, and what will allow it to endure. Today, we also recognize the incalculable cost borne by the families who join us here. Lincoln himself was keenly aware of the burden that they bear. In his stirring letter to Mrs. Bixby, a widow thought to have lost five sons during the Civil War, he wrote, quote, I feel how weak and fruitless must be any words of mine which should attempt to beguile you from the grief of a loss so overwhelming. But I cannot refrain from tendering you the consolation that may be found in the thanks of the Republic they died to save. I pray that our Heavenly Father may assuage the anguish of your bereavement and leave you only the cherished memory of the loved and lost and the solemn pride that must be yours to have laid so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. So today we honor Anthony and Henry but we also honor their families and all those who have lost loved ones in freedom's name. Thank you. General Dempsey, Dr. Westfall, Sergeant Major of the Army Chandler, Mr. Kohohoa Ano Ano, and Ms. Savela will now join Secretary Lynn on the stage for the induction ceremony. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3rd, 1863, has awarded in the name of Congress the Medal of Honor to then Private First Class Anthony T. Kahaohoa Hanohano, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Private First Class Anthony T. Kahaohoa Hanohano, Company H, 17th Infantry Regiment, 7th Infantry Division, distinguished himself by exemplary heroism in action against the enemy in the vicinity of Chupari, Korea on 1 September 1951. On that date, Private First Class Kohohoa Hanahano was in charge of a machine gun squad supporting the defensive position of Company F when a numerically superior enemy force launched a fierce attack. Because of the enemy's overwhelming numbers, friendly troops were forced to execute a limited withdrawal. As the men fell back, Private First Class Kahoahoa Hanahano ordered his squad to take up more defensible positions and provide covering fire for the withdrawing friendly force. Although having been wounded in the shoulder during the initial enemy assault, Private First Class Kahoahoa Hanahano gathered a supply of grenades and ammunition and returned to his original position to face the enemy alone. As the hostile troops concentrated their strength against his emplacement in an effort to overrun it, Private First Class Kahoahoa Hanahano fought fiercely and courageously, delivering deadly accurate fire into the ranks of the onrushing enemy. When his ammunition was depleted, he engaged the enemy in hand-to-hand -hand combat until he was killed. Private First Class Kohohoa Hanahano's heroic stand so inspired his comrades that they launched a counterattack that completely repulsed the enemy. Upon reaching Private First Class Kohohoa's replacement emplacement, friendly troops discovered 11 enemy soldiers lying dead in front of the emplacement and two inside it killed in hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
Private first class, kahuahua, hanahanos, exemplary heroism, and selfless devotion to duty are in keeping with the finest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, the 7th Infantry Division, and the United States Army. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3rd, 1863, has awarded in the name of Congress the Medal of Honor to then Private First Class Henry Savela, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his own life above and beyond the call of duty. Private First Class Henry Savela distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity above and beyond the, uh, the call of duty while serving as a rifleman with F Company, 32nd Infantry Division, 7th Infantry Division, in connection with combat operations against an armed enemy in Pyongyang, Korea on 12 June 1952. That afternoon, while Private First Class Savela and his platoon were patrolling a strategic hill to determine enemy strength and positions, they were subjected to intense enemy automatic weapons and small arms fire at the top of the hill. Coming under heavy fire, the platoon's attack began to falter. Realizing the success of the mission and the safety of the remaining troops were in peril, Private First Class Savela leapt to his feet and charged the enemy positions, firing his weapon and throwing grenades as he advanced. In the face of this courage and determination, the platoon rallied to the attack with renewed vigor. Private First Class Vela, utterly disregarding his own safety, destroyed enemy positions and inflicted heavy casualties when suddenly fragments from a mortar round exploding nearby seriously wounded him in the face. Despite his wounds, Private First Class Vela refused medical treatment and continued to lead the attack. When an enemy grenade landed among a group of his comrades, Private First Class Vela, without hesitation and undoubtedly aware of the extreme danger, threw himself upon the grenade. During this action, Private First Class Slayla was mortally wounded. Private First Class Slayla's extremely heroism and selflessness at the cost of his own life, above and beyond the call of duty, are in keeping with the highest traditions of the military service and reflect great credit upon himself, his unit, and the United States Army. Hollowed Heroes plaque will now be unveiled, inducting Private First Class Kahoahoa Hanahanu and Private First Class Svela into the Hall of Heroes. At this time, the Deputy Secretary of Defense will present the Medal of Honor flag. On 23 October 2002, Public Law 107-248, Section 8143, established the Medal of Honor flag to recognize service members who have distinguished themselves by gallantry and action above and beyond the call of duty. The Medal of Honor flag commemorates the sacrifice and blood shed for our freedoms and gives emphasis to the Medal of Honor being the highest award for valor by an individual serving in the armed forces of the United States. The light blue color with gold fringe bearing 13 white stars are adapted from the Medal of Honor ribbon. Thank you, Secretary Lynn, General Dempsey, Ms. Vela, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. George Kahoahoa Hanahano. Thank you. I guess the first thing I gotta say is that our family all excuse you for not the pronunciation of the last name. <laughs> it's not an easy name to pronounce, but the correct pronunciation is Kahoo Hano Hano. You know, I, I was thinking about what I was gonna say here, but we, it's been said over and over again, everybody seems to use the word honor and privilege. How many of us really sit back and realize what those two words mean? You know, looking at all these 
names listed here and with Anthony and Henry joining it, I believe I see one common thread to this. It's not the extraordinary gentleman, it's the hometown person that becomes the Medal of Honor recipient. People who go out and look and say, as Anthony would put in one way, what's all the fuss about? I went out and I did my job. And he did mention, like it was said, when he went to take the machine gun emplacement, don't worry, Sarge, I got your back. And it's such a great feeling for my family and us to be here. And we feel like we've adopted another family, the US, whole, or US Army family. And we've now got some brothers and sisters and cousins all the way in New Jersey. <laughs> but I, again, thank you so much. And our family really appreciate it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Anthony Svela. First, I'd like to thank the Army for their support, their kindness, and their service over the last few months. Uh, ten years was a long time, and it took all of this to understand why it's ten years. This is just amazing, and what an honor for me and the rest of my family. And um, I'm pretty much speechless, but I do want to thank the Army for everything. They, they've been fantastic to me and my family, and we're all very proud, very proud. Um, from my congressman to thank, to the Army, to the President, everyone, it's just been amazing, really, really amazing. And the honor will go from me to my son, to my brother's sons, and to their sons, and Savella will always be remembered. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as the Korean War plaque is returned to its rightful place in the Hall of Heroes and remain standing for the Army song and the departure of the official party. The words to the Army song can be found in your program.